Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters and recently I made a video about the top 5 budget modern decks that can win Friday Night Magic and I got a lot of positive reception on that video and people asking me to do the same thing for different formats. So today we're going to look at the top 5 popper decks. Not the top 5 budget popper decks because all popper decks are budget so those are a bunch of the best of the best decks you could play in popper that have a fair shot of winning at your local fnm if you're lucky enough to have popper fnm or simply to have fun with your friends while winning a lot of games so the first deck we're going to talk about is mono red burn this deck costs about 60 dollars to make um, it says 67 dollars but normally if you uh, buy some cards that are a little bit played you'll probably get down to 50 bucks uh, but if you buy at your local store all in Nierman condition, pay sales tax, you're probably gonna pay about 80 bucks. So this deck only has eight creatures. Voldarin Epicur, which is one red for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, there's one damage to each opponent and you make a blood token. So it's an artifact with one, tap it, discard a card, sacrifice it and draw a card. So it helps you filter later, later on in the game if you draw extra lands. And it's also a creature that attacks and does some damage, which is not bad, especially in Popper. Thermal Alchemist is a great card in a deck full of non-creature spells, uh, instants and sorceries to be exact. It is a 2 mana 0-3 with Defender, you tap it, deal 1 damage to each opponent, and when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you untap it. So effectively, all your instants and sorceries, your burn spells, deal 1 extra damage, and it's also a great blocker for small creature decks. When it comes to spells, uh, you play a lot of burn spells. You have Chain Lightning, Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, all spells that deal 3 damage for 1 red mana. Then you have Needle Drop. No, not Anthony Fantano. Needle Drop. 1 red, instant, deal 1 damage to target creature or player that was dealt damage this turn and draw a card. So it's great with Thermo Alchemist because you can uh, deal 1 damage with the Alchemist even though you did not cast a spell this turn. Then uh, cast the Needle Drop on the opponent, deal damage and draw a card. Searing Blaze is both removal and burn, which is great for a deck like this. Rift Bolt, another 1 mana, 3 damage spell. Screw the Critics, another 1 mana, 3 damage spell. And Fire Blast is great later in the game when you don't need your extra lands. Sacrifice them and deal 4 damage to target creature or player. Curse of the Pierced Heart is a great repeated damage source that can be a pain in the butt for control decks and other grindy decks. At the beginning of uh, Enchanted Player's Upkeep, it deals 1 damage. And it gets out of hand quickly if you have both on the battlefield. In terms of lands, 18 lands, Forgotten Cave and Mountain. Uh, sideboard, we have Electricery, Gidu Lava Runner, Mortar of Ashes, Pyroblast, Red Element Elemental Blast, Firebrand Archer, and Smash to Smithereens. This deck is pretty simple to play, uh, but kind of hard, hard to master. So if you want to get in Popper, and try to see uh, what you like about the format, if you like it at all. You can try playing Mono Red Burn, and uh, you're probably gonna have a little bit of fun in the beginning without uh, being too complicated. The next deck on this list is Koldotha Boros. And unfortunately, we can't play Prismatic Prism now because it is banned in Popper. That's right, banned. Who would have thought that Prophetic Prism would be banned? But we still have access to a core wellspring, which is a great card to sacrifice to Koldotha Rebirth, the namesake card of this deck. One red sorcery, sacrifice an artifact, and you make three 1-1 one, one red goblins. Uh, this is not used like in the modern versions of this deck. We're not looking to play a bushwhacker and win on turn two or three. We're looking to generate a lot of value from this by returning our wellspring to our hand with cards like Glint Hawk and Core Skyfisher. We also have Thraben Inspector to have more card draw and Seeker of the Way uh, to gain life. And also it gets pretty big later in the game. Uh, we also have Galvanic Blast to take advantage of our artifacts and have some removal. Lightning Bolt, some other removal and burn. Rally the Peasants can be great as a flashback or also later in the game you can cast it twice as a top deck uh, when you have a lot of 1-1 tokens. There's also four copies of Experimental Synthesizer which is a one red mana artifact. When it enters or leaves the battlefield, you exile the top card of your library and until end of turn, you may play that card. And you can also pay two generic and one red, sacrifice it and make a two, two white samurai with vigilance. 
So it's another way to generate extra tokens, uh, generate value, and it's also another artifact you can sacrifice to your Koldotha Rebirth without being too sad about losing it because it will at least have done something as a one-mana artifact. Uh, last non-creature, uh, non-land cards are two makeshift munitions, one generic, one red, enchantment, pay one, sacrifice an artifact or creature, and deal one damage to any target. So later in the game, when the opponent has a big board, and you have a lot of 1-1 tokens, you can use this to finish them off, or even destroy their smaller creatures. In terms of lands, you want to play some artifact lands, some bounce lands, and uh, also a few basic lands, and Windscarred Crag. In terms of sideboard, you have Gorilla Shaman, Pyroblast, Elemental Blast, Relic of Progenitus, Leave No Trace, and uh, uh, Dust to Dust. I really like this deck. I used to play the Jeskai version of this uh, a while ago on Magic the Gathering Online. And I really enjoyed it, but now I think that without Prophetic Prism to fix the mana really reliably, I think Boros is the way to go if you want to play Koldotha Rebirth in Popper. The next deck on the list is Bogles, and this deck is surprisingly really broken, especially for Popper, because this is essentially a modern deck that is Popper legal, but it just doesn't have the same mana base. You have access to some of the best uh, hexproof creatures like the Glade Cover Scout, Slippery Bogle, Silhana Ledge Walker. You also have two copies of Heliod's Pilgrim to search for your aura cards. And when it comes to the auras, you have plenty. You have Abundant Growth. You have Cartouche of Solidarity, Ethereal Armor, Rancor, Sentinel's Eyes, uh, Utopia Sprawl is an aura for your lands. Ancestral Mask, uh, same thing with Abundant Growth. Uh, Ancestral Mask, this is here to pump up your creature for having so many auras. Armadillo Cloak is essentially unbeatable <laughs> once it resolves on your creature. Plus two, plus two, Trample and Lifelink. Uh, incredibly hard to beat in Popper, especially if you have other auras attached to it. Uh, in terms of lands, Arctic Tree Line, Ash Barrens, Forest and Plains, so pretty basic here. In terms of sideboards, you have Gutshot, Lifelink, Young Wolf, Crimson, Acolyte, Ram Through, Ray of Revelation, Standard Bearer, and Cartouche of Strength. Uh, this deck is pretty simple to play, and it's really broken, can get really out of hand very quickly. And it's pretty fun to play. However, the gameplay is not really diverse, so if you want to stick with a certain deck for a long time, this may not be the best option for you. However, when it comes to poppers, decks are really cheap. So if you want to replace it or play something similar that has a different strategy, uh, you might be able to use your cards in other decks. The next deck I want to talk about is Demir Fairies. And this deck is a very rare thing, a popper deck over $100. But it is well worth it because a lot of these cards are not only used in Demir Fairies, but also in other decks like Mono Blue or Control decks. But this deck is essentially a tempo deck that uses cards like Fairy Seer, Augur of Bola, Spellstutter Sprite, Ninja of the Deep Hours, Thorn of the Black Rose, and Gurmag Angler to both generate value and apply pressure on the opponent. Gurmag Angler is also incredibly hard to deal with in Popper because uh, we don't have access to cards like Path to Exile or Teferi Time Raveler or Rat Effects. So People are going to have usually to spend two cards to deal with this. Uh, either it's a Galvanic Blast plus Lightning Bolt or Lightning Bolt plus Fire Bolt or attack with a creature and Lightning Bolt, the Grimag Angler. So Grimag Angler is really powerful. Uh, Ninja of the Deep Powers is also great because um, it generates a lot of value by drawing extra cards and also Popper is not a format with a lot of creatures. So normally you're going to be able to get in more than once with your Ninja. In terms of spells, you play some of the best spells Popper has to offer, like Brainstorm, Preordain, also Cast Down, Counterspell, uh, Snuff Out, but you also have Devour Flesh, Echoing Decay, and uh, Suffocating Fumes, because this ain't legacy at the end of the day. <laughs> when it comes to lands, Ash Barrens, Ice Tunnel, Snow Covered Island Swamp, and Terramorphic Expanse, to make sure you have your colors all the time. Uh, you also want to play a lot of islands because you want to be able to play your preordains, your brainstorm, and your fairy seers on turn one. Sideboard, you have an all blue elemental, elemental blast, dispel, relic of progenitus, chainer's addict, coin truth, reaping the graves, and suffocating fumes. If you want to have the full popper experience, this is a deck I highly recommend. Even though it's a hundred bucks, it's still a pretty good deal for a deck you're going to be able to keep for your entire life because this deck has been around forever. Just, it has had some cards banned, like Gush but, and Arkham's Astrolabe, 
but it has still evolved and just replaced it with some other card. So if ever, let's say, Preordain gets banned, you'll probably just replace it with Opt or Consider, and the deck will be just fine. Now, when it comes to the number one deck, I would recommend, if you want to play Popper, that is Mono Blue Tempo. If we're talking about the full Popper experience, this is exactly it. This is the deck I would use to describe what Popper is. This deck costs $80, so it's slightly less expensive than Demir Fairies, but it's even more significative of the Popper gameplay because it maximizes the use of the blue cards like Fairy Miscreant, Fairy Seer, uh, this, the new Moon Circuit Hacker, which is the new ninja that when it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And if you do, you discard a card unless it entered the battlefield this turn, so therefore incentivizing you to use the ninjutsu ability. Spell Stutter Sprite, Ninja of the Deep Hours, and Spire Golem. You also play cards like Dispel for Spike to disrupt your opponent, along with Spell Pierce, Counter Spell, and Snap. Mutagenic Growth is here to deal extra damage with your creatures, or even be a combat trick to get rid of the opponent's slightly bigger creature. Mantle of Tides. Uh, the card from Throne of Eldraine, which is one blue for equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two, and whenever you draw your second card each turn, uh, you attach Metal of Tides target creature control, and you draw second cards very often, so you can use it very easily. And then you have Bind the Monster, which is one blue for Nora. When it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. It deals damage to you equal to its power. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its uh, controller's untap step, so it's a very cheap removal spell. Lands, pretty simple, 17 snow-covered islands, but you could only do you could do only 17 islands if you wanted to and save a few bucks. Uh, sideboard, you have an all blue elemental blast, dispel, gutshot, relic, echoing truth, and stormbot guys. So pretty simple popper sideboard, which can deal with a variety of decks. So that's it for the last deck I wanted to cover in the top five popper decks. Let me know what you think about popper as a format overall. I link my introduction to the format for those of you who are not familiar at the end. So if you want to click on it and watch that video, feel free to do so. And if you have another format you'd like me to do a top five list, leave it in the comments below and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching.